Chapel Union of Liberia, M. Fontu for short. This memorandum of understanding that Kakada said is basically geared towards enhancing public safety and ensuring the safety of motorists. As you may be aware, over the last one and a half months, the Liberia National Police has embarked on what we call a safety campaign. We're trying to ensure that we have a safety culture within the breadth, left and breadth of Liberia. Today is the motorcyclist, and I'm sure the next time we're here, we're going to actually see us probably with the truck tracker, I mean truck drivers union, and other stakeholders that are affected by our work. We intend to create a condition wherein the driver on the road will know when it is that he needs to put on his signal lights when he's bending. We also intend to ensure that the school going kid will know when to cross the streets. They will know when to get on this, uh, what we call the, the crosswalks. They will know when the green, what the green light, the red and orange lights are for. And even ourselves, as others, some of us are not very much aware of what the rules of the law are. So with this uh, motorcycle service, this is the emphasis today. We've uh, tried to get off the name of no-go zone. We've tried to call it now the restricted areas. So uh, we've jointly agreed to make the road from Freeport to central Monrovia and all part of town a restricted area for motorcycles. We also jointly agreed to consider from ELWA Junction throughout the Tottenham Boulevard and the rest of Monrovia a restricted area for motorcyclists. In the same vein, we thought what we refer to as the Keke or three wheelers, we have a little bit of privilege, that is to say, they will be allowed to move from Freeport to Wallstown through the Clarentown and Vartan corridors. Only that they will not be allowed to use the, the new bridge. Rather, they will go through what we call the Zulu Duma or the old bridge, go to Waterside, and they will have access to all parts of Monrovia except the Broad and Cave Streets. The one from the Jalatan will come up on the bypass here, and they can go as far as Benson Street and go back into town, and they can also cross up to maternity center and go down the UN Drive. This MOU also speak to what will be the penalties for violators. Of course, during the enforcement, there will always be people who will think they should violate. And uh, the man on my left, Mr. Crayon, he has actually prevailed on us. And this is important to say, from the initial stage of this MOU, we intend that to close the Somalia Drive to make it a restricted area, to make the robbers fee highway a restricted area. But due to his consistent plea, he asked us to give him the Somalia Drive and the robber fee highway. Considering the number of motorcyclists, considering the livelihood issues that are associated with it, we thought that was prudent enough to do. It is against that background that it will be allowed to come from the Robbers Free Highway. When you get at the ELWA junction, you can go to West Bay and also use the Somalia Drive, or say called the Japanese Freeway now. You can go through the Japanese Freeway. When you get to Freeport, you have Duala and the rest of town for you. So uh, the cutoff points are going to be from Ray Light, I mean from uh, ELWA Junction and Freeport. So basically, that is what we got for you today. The penalties in here will later be read out to you. We don't want to bore you. Since I got my colleague here, we have got a couple of words to say to you. We are glad for coming up to our police station. And thanks for covering this. Here after we want to see Buckley sign this uh, MOU on the table right there where you sit at. You know, Honorable Ken, you're welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you. I will start by saying I am a father of a three months old child. First child, and taking the consideration of the law, care, and concern, and this child is sick, needs an injection for healing, and knowing to the fact.
standard that uh, advanced that with this prescription, the child will live. And so knowing as a father, loving my child, having to go through the test of time, see a three-month-old child going uh, through uh, injection by a medical doctor. Why do I mean? I love the motorcycle and transcycle sector so much. In the sector that you know, I'm so dearly having operated commercial motorcycle for more than eight years, serving as chairman of a parking lot, serving as a coordinator of the And now I'm the president general of the Federal Reserve Motorcycles and Transcycles Units of Liberia. We've had uh, numerous of uh, condemnation over the period where people consider motorcyclists as non-living things, and a lot of nomenclatures are very attached to us. As a president and leader of this center, knowing that we want to rebrand this center and making our cyclists to be recognized as agents of positive change, we strongly believe that working collaboratively and constructively with the state authorities that all the years were considered as cat and dogs between that is the motorcyclists, tricyclists, the police. We strongly believe that building the relationship will help keep the peace and stability of our country. There is no way where in Georgia Kenya will be a president of this sector, where people will consider us as regulars, where people will consider us as good for nothing people. I want to say simply that there are numerous of our people that are contributing towards their family's livelihood. But it was surprising to note this sector is challenged to the extent that every day we observe the inflow of new riders. And as such, taking into consideration public safety measures is key to our sector. You may, be, you may recall there have been numerous of accidents. One happened right on the right, right, right highway five minutes before I arrived on the scene and I saw two Liberians lying on the, on, the, on the ground dead. And I shared tears. It was so painful. And I also saw an accident around the, uh, the South Kong, Kong Town road, where in one of our cyclists dropped a passenger around the circum, making a U-turn in Mary's family there. This is not what we want. And as a president, I strongly believe, although I will go through <coughs> condemnation insults, but it is our responsibility to provide uh, safety guardians for our people. So that such, we also encourage the media, not to politicize what we are doing. Because remember, whenever there's a rising situation, especially from our sector, oh, the motorcycle is you. Oh, the motorcycle is you. How do you expect investors to come and invest in our country if we cannot be governed by laws? Liberia is no exception to Arab countries around the world. Every day I hear people praising Ghana, praising Nigeria and other countries. I've been to other places. This is not the only country that we try to put restriction. Alright? The only thing is that we should not politicize these restrictions. Anything other than that, I cannot be part of it. But anything that has to do with public safety, I'm part of it. Because it is our responsibility as leaders to make sure that we keep our society safe. And one loss is one loss to all. So I want to say to you, the journalist, help us in this endeavor. And I also want to call on the lawmakers, those who are involved in inciting our cyclists and putting them in the view. You have a role to play as a lawmaker. I think what you can do is to help proper bills that will enable our guys, when more companies come, they will be able to get a job and leave the motorcycle fee. I ran back for eight years. 
Do you think to ride a motorbike is very easy? It is not an easy thing. So I know how people it is. Our prayer is that this government should see reason to open avenues where satellites can, uh, uh, can get opportunity that others to come will be able to come and others who have been there for long can at least transition. This is what we want to see. We want to see some of our lawmakers sitting on a motorcycle, leaving their basic function, oversight lawmaking and representation, and then getting on the field to tell motorcyclists, let's give like you a, a quaka or, or better like you. This type of quaka is about the safety of this country. Our partners are coming here. International committee is watching how well we're going to maintain sanity in our nation. And I strongly believe everything in this country, police and it is unacceptable. And there's a reason why people are refusing to come and invest in our country. So I want to encourage each and every one of us. There's people. I just narrated a story of what, three months of child. So to tell you how I dearly love this sector. All right, it's painful to see as many people who elected me to be their leader. But at times as a leader, you have to close your eyes and take some decision for the betterment of the of the overall of a majority. And that's what we are doing. Every time I hear people, there's a, there was a time I was invited to Ghana where I serve as ECOWAS UFA representative to Ghana's election. One of the leaders from South Africa asked me, John, we have over here that cyclists in Liberia are reckless. Cyclists in Liberia are not respecter of the law. It is shameful that people outside there will, will recognize us not as con constructive contributor to the, to the economy and the state, but rather in a negative form. But how can we change the narrative? It's by you helping us, the media. I want the media to please take charge of this. If Liberia will be safe, investors will come and invest. But if we we'll politicize everything, I said it on school last night, this governance time, during elections, we had our way. Everybody had their way to go. But this governance time, when we're talking about public safety, let us not politicize it. So once again, I want to say to you, I call on you the journalists because we've listened to several media and, uh, uh, stations politicizing them, they're taking the, 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 the food from the table. Don't you think the lives have been lost? You the see people. I remember there were some uh, media club when I was calling for this. They are the one that running. Oh, they can't get bread up on the table. So then why you want? We have to keep that curious here. So once again, Honorable is our deputy for operations. We remain committed. We remain resolute. We remain uncompromised. We remain on burning to making sure that we have a safe society called Liberia. Where investors will come and invest and make Liberians to be employed. Not just riding motorbike. It's all about our life. People should not just restrict us to ride motorbike. I always say this, thousands of us are university graduates and university students, but people are not recognizing that, but only because we sit on motorcycle, nobody wants to respect us. It is unacceptable, and I want to frown on anyone who will, who will reduce us to that level. We are contributing immensely to the growth and development of the state. So we are not, and I repeat, we are not taking bread from anybody's table. All right? The fact that through our negotiation, you listen to the Deputy RG for operations. There were other areas we advocated that it should be open to our people to run. Even Central Morovia, we have some parking stations in Central Morovia. You have access to crossing there are points. So you won't tell me, I say you ride on a new riot. We talk about training. So one of the things we are calling all our partners, there will be massive training in this document. We have a portion that I talk about massive and compulsory training on road, safe, road and public safety and the respect of rule of law by every motorcycle and transcycle rider. Very soon, we will be introducing or calling for motorcycle. We want to uniform every commercial cyclist. It was surprising to note, every time I hear, oh, the Jackman phone, oh, in fact, the Jackman jerseys. You think that's what I want to hear? I want to hear? Once upon a time, we invited to one of the embassies. Do you think Joy F. Kenyon representing the sector is from my, from my, from my, from my name to, to, to be turned to the right and be on the Saves our history that we when while we were there, it was right, but we were doing the right thing. So once again, honorable Archie will remain committed and will be remain supportive to making sure that cyclists are law and party. So we call on every motorcycle and trust rider. You don't want to be uh 
against the law, and you believe that you cannot be restricted, the law will take a course. We will not tolerate anybody just respecting the law, especially on our watch. Let's continue to be peaceful. But one thing I come here, continue to say, we will continue to advocate for our sadness, and no one will take advantage of our sadness, especially when it reach to our text, that we will not get into it. But in the same way, be all respect of the law. Thank you all so much. So the Deputy Inspector General will provide your quick information, and after we will take your questions. So uh, I thought to also let you all know that uh, the effective commencement date of these enforcements will be on the, on the 15th of May, 2024. We are in other corners that the enforcement was starting a couple of days ago. No, no action fears. We are responsible for our law and order, and that is our primary responsibility. As long as uh, we resolved to enforce on the beginning on the 15th, we are going to start on the 15th, and we expect that all of us as citizens will be in full adherence to the law. Let's all, all remember that if you don't get on the motorcycles, they're not going to ride. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't hire the services, of course nobody wants to do a dirty ride. It's because we're chattering them. It's because we're riding on the cycles. That's why they're coming in those rooms. So before I close. I would like to encourage the general public to be in adherence with the rule of law. That is to say, from the 15th of the on a motorcycle from beyond PRWA Junction to Monrovia and from Freeport to Monrovia. Thank you very much. We'll take your questions and please, your questions should be limited to the information has provided to you. And please do not ask questions in the question because of time's sake. So we'll take you. Yes, my name is. your name and your institution. My name is Daniel Ku, and I report for Ku FM. My concern is about uh, NGOs, uh, motorbikes, and journalists who are also applying in those areas that have been res restricted by you, sir. Well, this is not a new undertaking. Uh, we started this thing sometimes in 2012, 2013. Mm -hmm. And of course, to every general rule, there are exceptions. That is to say, there are people who are into food delivery services. There are people who are into mail delivery services. There are other professionals that have got their work to be done in different forms and manners. Of course, there will be remedy available. We intend to give what we call access passes that will have a duration and then they will always be renewed. When, yes, there when, will be a remedy to it. Yeah, when will the access pass be available? We will let the public know as soon as possible. Okay, thank you. Yes, Prince. So my name is Prince and I report for Prime FM and also focus on Liberia TV. So my question goes to the president of the Sagolist Sago Union. Uh, so since um, this news hit the public, some of your very members have has criticized you of being a partisan of the United Party. That is why you are carrying on this negotiation. Some of them also allege that uh, you did not meet other uh, uh, union in the, in the sector and this action is intended to get at some of them who did not support the party. How do you respond to that? The A to that, the B to that rather is. Uh, one of the things raised by them when I spoke with some of them was that when, these, when those restrictions have been placed on them, the, the, how they call it, or the, the, the enforcers from your union can so now take away their motorbike and to not report it to the police, and they can get missing. How do you intend to work with the police in ensuring that those things do not... Uh... Just before Mr. Mr. Kino come in, let me, take, let me begin. Yeah. You know, this is just a new methodology that we are paying as the people's police. We're trying to build a consensus in our enforcement. Let's all remember that the police is responsible for the maintenance of law and order. So we're not on any legal obligation to consult the leadership of motorcyclists or any other group as far as the enforcement of the laws are concerned. But because time has changed and we want to have a consensus building, it was against that background that we got in touch with uh, uh, the motorcycle union and taking us to where we are today. So, so I, thought me, I thought that was important to make that before we start hearing about that. So let me first say rubbish still then. Uh, issue of partisanship, right? This is governance time. I said it from my intro, doing election <coughs> material, everybody has a role. And even you as a journalist, you can't tell me you cannot vote. 
So you want to deny me of my constitutional right? It is my right, all right? But when it comes to public safety, I think it is for all, not for certain partisans. No. What we are talking about, we are not calling anybody name. But the fact is that we want to provide public safety. Thank you. And the issue of the imposement for the, we are not silent. So how would somebody say, start to say arrest them? They, they are what happened in the past mm -hmm. will not happen one of our regime. We have said it. In fact, the issue of the violation, police were given by up to 50 dollars, 60 dollars you have to get before. During our negotiation, we decided that no policeman will give any motorcycle or, or plate about, or, or ticket about 2,000 because of their report. So these are some of the things we are discussing. There are things that we, we saw in the past happening. We want to make sure that we don't see them. But you, the journalists, once again, have to help us. All right? We are not discussing party here. We're discussing state. Thank you. So we take um, the government and then we just go on. Yes. Okay, my name is Lever Kame Lobo. I work for the News Public Trust. Uh, Mr. John, I would like to know how many sergeants do you have in Morovia? Different mm -hmm. number of sergeants you have. Just in Morovia, we have all 150,000. In Mosogaro. Just in Mosogaro. Okay. So if you see 20 persons money around, Thank you so much. My name is Stro Confirmer and I report for Spoon Network. Uh, to the police, somebody who would like to know how prepared you are in terms of uh, their power and those who are saying that they will, after the 15th, they will, they are, their intention is to come and pray you that the day should be extended. How prepared are you? We prepare adequately prepared to manage any situation in town. We've got a duty to ensure the safety of the citizenry and residents within our borders. Every bit is that an issue. All we, what we intend to do is to make sure that our actions are less confrontational. And that is the reason why we find a good processor daily in the discharge of our duty in this new dispensation. So, yeah, so my name is Michael Obayo and I report for Sky FM Sky TV. My question goes to the general inspector. Yes, please. We witnessed the police enforcing such law before. Specifically, they were also doing what we call a sound colors to move about flying. Color coding. Yeah, the color coding. Uh, uh, and we are now seeing the police coming back to me because when they started, they didn't have another way. So these guys are coming back with enforcement. I want to know how prepared are you to continue this enforcement? Is it that this going to continue or you know, just this for another maybe a few years of it and they will come out with final code? So to let you all know, I was uh, a part of the team that successfully had the no-go zone a couple of years back, between 2012 to 2013. I was the immediate deputy to the office I'm sitting in today. I was 105. So I was the guy in charge of the field. And we succeeded in making sure that motorcycles did not plow certain part of our roads. And the reached a point that we didn't have to deploy. Everybody knew exactly what the boundaries were. So yes, sustainability is a concern. It's going to be sustained. Our concern uh, is we learned from the past. It was more confrontational to some extent. And uh, we intend to make it very less confrontational. That is the essence of this whole consensus building exercise. We have got him on the road yesterday or tomorrow and said, you know what? These are the colors for no more cycles going to fly here. News men carry the news. And we're saying no. Time have changed. We consider the number of motorcycles in that bureau. We consider it's a livelihood issue. We don't have enough questions to survive on these cycles. So we thought to be a consensus with them. So we have the be show that we're going to sustain them. But we're asking you play your role as well. Be uh, help us in making sure that these messages are out there. Safety is all of us concerned. Yes. <clears throat> all right. I'm Steve. Steve Rawls from Joy. Um, it's okay. I start from the allegation of your affiliation with political parties. I would actually like to know from you what, what has been your relationship with your fellow police motor service. Because in recent time, we've had a check chat with a few of your guys, and they have continued to tell us that you, as the president or the head of the EU, you must rather be a matter of fact. 
do not have a very good relationship with many of your colleagues, especially as it relates to the ongoing recognition that will begin very soon. Uh, many of them, you are not adhering to their class. In fact, some of the meetings that you have had with the police, you have not gone back to them to discuss with them adequately to be able to, you know, understand, come to one understanding as to how they can be able to engage this entire uh, MOU of the international police. Okay. So again, uh, you know, we didn't want to bore you, we didn't want to stand up here and reading the whole memorandum of understanding for you. It's not just the enforcement. This document encompasses a lot more other stuff. That is to say, a lot of serious training component. We want to make sure trainings are provided for them. We uh, started having meetings that included all of them. We encourage them to also form, so you see, so they form to the Federation of Motor Group, but now it's called M Fund. So there was some merger. Uh, there are documents that they managed to form themselves into a federation. So uh, to some extent, we know we're dealing with more than 80%, 80 to 90% of the most upper population. Of course, there will always be that little group that don't want to be in adherence with the law. And then be prepared to deal with the ones. Yeah, so with that, uh, <coughs> how do you think I was elected to us if I'm not in close consultation. Nobody is going to be elected for the second time if you don't have a relationship. So I can simply say to you, I enjoy the confidence of all of my leaders across the 15 counties. Let us not, there's a, the reason why I was not developing, oh, everything is here, right? We have our leadership in the 15 counties. And so if you want me now to start telling you some of the developments we've had, with John Connor, my wife, as president, You'll be surprised. When I told her, we didn't have offices in all of the counties. But today we we'll have offices in the 15 counties that you can that you can see vividly. And we have leadership structure in all of the counties. We have our social media platform that when we just just go in our chat room, everybody will see it across the, across the country. Besides that, when we discuss here, we will go back to our office and we call the 17 districts last Saturday. Last Saturday, we met with all of the 17 district <coughs> of coordinators in most of our year. All right? So if somebody will come up and say, we were not informed, let me tell you, if somebody want to be restricted, even if they know about it, they will say, I know. So let's just take it as it is. And let's help us as a journalist, like I said, let's preach this message. Void of politics. Let's look at a better good of our society. How can you save that? Yes, so... My name is Lincoln. The last two questions. My name is Lincoln, and I write for the New York newspaper. Uh, this MOU uh, will be an embarrassment uh, if we do not have penalty in Nigeria. So I want to know what are the penalties attached to this MOU? And uh, another thing, uh, honorable, you know, I listen to you talking about uh, informing your all police where uh, this MOU signed to be was not going to utilize right. But I'm a little bit concerned. What I'm why is it that I'm not seeing all people from uh, the other association here with you? I'm only seeing a few of your guys who people are trying to bring your comments. Why? Wow. Everyone can feel here. There are some of our leaders who are If you want to see them, we can call everybody inside. All right? My leaders are here. And so whatever I do, listen, I'm a leader. I don't just take decisions. If you see them during the bad regime, that's one of the things that affected me, right? Because certain people want me, when you are leader of a certain people, what they know, they have influence. The way they let come and sign. I was going to do what I want to. I told him until my leaders can agree to this, I will not have this myself. So all of our leaders are aware, but guess what? Some of our people will go behind the scene, take small deal from some politician, and want to come back. I will not do that. I stand for what I believe, and I am who I am, and this is your game. And this is just uh, one, one of the first actions we are taking. But going forward, we intend to visit a lot of your media houses and the people in the print media. We also want to go on the campaign in the field, to go from parking station to parking station. We intend to bring banners to create enough awareness. That is the only reason why we put this time in between. We have signed a memorandum of understanding and say, let's start next week. We're going to even conduct training for their own tax force. They've nominated the name of, or submitted the name of about 150 persons, and we're going to screen them. We're going to make sure we provide training for them because we don't want them to go up in the field and start to do things that are inimical to the well-being of everybody else. 
So yes, we are concerned about making sure this memorandum of understanding are realized, but we are not doing the absence of uh, awareness. You will soon see us everywhere, the police band will be to some places. The last time we had a football game in, in Banff yesterday with Boris Akrebs, we intend to continue here across from Rome and other parts. So of course we're going to engage, not just the ones that listen to the radio, not just the ones that read the, read the newspapers, but we'll be going up to the parking stations and having conversations with them. With the, with the fans, I heard you talking about fans. That might be the reason why you wouldn't answer. So, so yes, again, uh, there have been a time when uh, Maurice Sackers have been issued fifty dollars tickets, sixty dollars tickets for the violation, three wheels and two wheels. Mr. Kingman here has really pushed us to the extent he said some of the conditions attached to sign this one on understanding was the motorcyclists are made to their reporting money is not only a thousand dollars or a thousand and five hundred dollars per day. If you have to give my motorcyclist a ticket of fifty dollars US, sixty dollars US, then we're not partners. So this memorandum, as per this memorandum of understanding, motorcycles will be in violation, will be issued a ticket of not more than two thousand Liberian dollars. And then if you are registered, you'll be issued a ticket. If you register and you got a lesson, you'll be issued a ticket and you can go and you pay. If you are not, your motorcycle will be parked until it is registered, it is show, and you have a driver lessons. Same thing applies to the three wheels. The Keke riders, I remember myself giving a Keke rider a hundred dollar ticket for putting somebody in the front. Because you see the wheels are not made to be spiraled at the protruder. If you put somebody beside you, how do you turn? I mean, Again, Mr. Okuyan was able to turn our hands, and then we all agree in this memorandum of understanding that we will give a ticket to the team with us not exceeding 4,000 Liberian dollars. If you are registered and you got lessons, you are plated, you pay, it goes to the government revenue. You go. If you are not registered, your account will be impounded until you can pay that for that. Register it, insure it, and obtain your driver's spending. So, just to highlight, very soon you will hear us again. Or with the digital transport. So our work is not just to say, oh, they are parking the police. When the child comes for um, um, tax collection and home with the digital transport, if I was called just recently, I want to make it clear that we will be law abiding. Everything that has to do with respecting the law, we are going to work in that line. We've been committed to that. And thank God now we've been we are respected to make sure that we, we, we have our say in whatever decision and take it unilaterally that it needs to be by the leadership, not recognizing us. But now, as long as we have a say, I tell you for free, we are encouraging our people. And they should be on the list because today is John King and President. They don't let you be President tomorrow. And I wanted to do the right thing. Let people stop calling up, suicide before, let us stop calling up.